How much? Excuse me. How much for the car? She's not for sale. You have a good day, sir. Daisy. So if you have not yet seen John Wick and you're wondering, is this the right movie for me? Let me give you a general idea of what this movie is like and then you can decide for yourself. Basically, John Wick is Keanu Reeves shooting people in the face for about 90 minutes. It's pretty much it. He shoots lots and lots of people in the face. I would not be surprised to learn that this movie set a new world record for most headshots on film. And if it doesn't, I would like to know what did. Because there's a lot of him shooting people in the face in this movie. Keanu Reeves plays the role of John Wick, the titular character. And that is a weird trend that really kind of bothers me, just naming the movie after the main character, which... You know, that can work if it's a well-known character, like Batman, or if it's a famous historical figure, like Lincoln. You call your movie Lincoln, I know what it's going to be about. You call your movie John Wick. Who the fuck is John Wick? No idea. I know now. He is one of the most feared and respected hitmen in the history of ever, and he is so feared and respected because he is incredibly good at what he does. And what he does is shoot people in the face. And when he runs out of bullets, no problem. He'll just grab the nearest sharp object and stab you in the face. No sharp object? No problem. He's got his car. He'll run you over in the face. Or he'll grab some explosives, toss a grenade at you, and blow you up. Again, in the face. This is what he does. If you cross John Wick, there is only one possible outcome. You are going to die. In the face. That's pretty much it. I had a lot of fun with this one. This was so very good. Uh, probably nothing that will win any awards. Uh, but you know what? It really, it doesn't matter. This is just a movie that allows you to sit back and just enjoy yourself. If you're the kind that enjoys really hard-hitting, balls-to-the-wall action movies. Because that's... It, it's just a whole lot of fun. It's... It does start out with a bit of a disturbing moment, and I want to warn you about this because... See, here's the thing. It starts off with John Wick after he has retired from being a hitman because at some point he fell in love with a woman and decided this is probably not the best career path for him if he wants to settle down and get married, raise a family and all that. So he retires from the life of a hitman. Unfortunately, turns out this woman has terminal sick. I don't I, I assume cancer. They they don't actually say it doesn't really matter. So she dies, and apparently she had some provision in her will where when she died, she would have a puppy delivered to John. So that way he would have something to remember her by, and he wouldn't have to be alone. Very sweet gesture on her part. Very nice. So at some point, John has a run-in at a gas station with some Russian gangsters, one of which is played by Alfie Allen, who is Theon Greyjoy on Game of Thrones. And they have a little argument uh, in both English and Russian, because turns out John can speak Russian just fine. He's a man of many talents. Yeah, he will speak Russian in the face. <laughs> and uh, so thinking that it's over, he goes home. But unfortunately, the Russian assholes follow him, beat the shit out of him, and take his car. And, and here's the part that can be a bit disturbing. I should hope you find it disturbing, because if not, there's something wrong with you. They kill his dog. What the fuck? <laughs> That's... Yeah, it's uh, definitely not a scene for the faint of heart, and if you're the kind that can't handle moments like that, then maybe you should give this one a pass, or at least turn away when that scene comes up. Um, and so, after that happens... John decides this cannot stand because that puppy was basically the only thing he had left 
of his late wife, and they took it from him. And so he's going to have to exact a little revenge by shooting people in the face. And so he goes on a killing spree, hunting down Russian Theon so he can kill him in the face. And they let you know right away just how feared and respected he is, not, not by showing him killing anyone right away. They wait a little while to get to that point. First, Russian Theon takes John's car to a chop shop that's run by John Leguizamo. And John takes one look at that car and recognizes it and says, where did you get that car? And Russian Theon says, oh, we took it from John Wick and I killed his dog. And John immediately punches Russian Theon in the face and tells him to get the hell out of his shop. And the next day, John gets a call from Russian Theon's father, a Russian mob boss played by Mikhail Nikvist. I hope I'm saying his name right. It's a... Uh, he, he was in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the original Swedish version. Uh, so, nice to see him getting some mainstream Hollywood roles now. And so he, he calls him up and says, So, I heard that you decided to punch my son in the face the other day. John says, Yes, I did. Would you mind telling me why? And you can tell he's not happy about this at all. Because what Russian mob boss would be happy about someone punching his son in the face? And John, without flinching, without missing a beat, just says, he took John Wick's car and killed his dog. And immediately the anger just evaporates from Mikhail Mikvist's face and is replaced by just a bit of shock and just a hint of fear. And all he can say is, oh. <laughs> Conversation over. <laughs> With just that one word, that one O, oh, you know it's on. And oh, it is, and it is glorious. The action in this movie, so much fun. They do not pull any punches at all, uh, quite literally in some cases. There's lots of punching, lots of bones breaking, lots of in the face, you know. Uh, yeah, the two guys that directed this, David Leitch and Chad Stahelski, Again, hope I'm saying those right. Did a fantastic job with this. Uh, the acting uh, was also pretty good overall. Uh, I, I already mentioned Nick Vist and Alan. Willem Dafoe has a small role in this movie. Uh, Dean Winters. Adrian Palicki. Uh, mentioned John Leguizamo. Ian McShane has a small part in this. A uh, lot of really big names in this. I was surprised. Uh, Keith Jardine, an MMA fighter. That some of you may know his name. He has a part in this as well. I guess they wanted someone who can do his own fight scenes and did a nice job with that. Daniel Bernhardt, who some of you might remember if you watched Mortal Kombat Conquest back in the day. I watched Mortal Kombat Conquest back in the day. I'm not sure why, because looking back, it was a really stupid show. <laughs> it's just, really, it's just, it was Mortal Kombat, and it was on TV, and... I was young and stupid and didn't know any better. Like, hey, this is awesome. It really wasn't. But anyway, yeah, he was on that show. He was also in The Matrix Reloaded. He was like the head agent in that movie. So he and Keanu got to have a bit of a reunion and beat the shit out of each other again. That was fun to watch. Um, yes, uh, Bernard has never been a strong actor, but if you need a guy who can do his own fight choreography, he's your man. He, he's very good at that. And he was awesome at that in this movie. And it, yeah, he and Keanu had some very good fights. Um, yeah, Kevin Nash had a small cameo as well. His voice did not. Um, at least I'm pretty sure it was not his voice. It didn't sound like him. It sounded like someone with a much deeper voice and a Russian accent. So, w Which threw me for a second, because I'm thinking, well, it looks like him. Maybe it's not. But I looked it up later. No, it is him. They just looped him. Uh, yeah, he's got a cameo. Um, as for Keanu himself... Well, Keanu Reeves has never been known as being an outstanding actor. Uh, he doesn't really do a whole lot to change that in this movie, but this is definitely one of his stronger performances. Um, the weird thing about Keanu is, in terms of physical acting and facial expressions and that kind of stuff and action sequences, he can hold his own just fine. 
really it's just dialogue that he seems to have a problem with. There are some times where it's just like he forgets how to speak like a human. I don't, I don't know how he manages to do that, but yeah, and it's not all bad throughout the entire movie. There are some lines he says just fine. There are other lines he says as if he has a cork shoved up his ass. And I don't know how I come up with this stuff, but... <laughs> But you no, know, he does. I kind of enjoyed that. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Yeah, yeah, cork up his ass. But I know why I'm thinking that, because there was a trailer for the interview before this movie, and if you haven't seen it, just go watch the trailer. You'll understand. But yeah, but this is definitely one of his stronger performances and probably his best performance since The Matrix. Uh, where the Wachowski brothers were actually able to drag a decent performance out of him. So, yeah, when he's had the right director, he can do well. And he clearly had the right directors here. Uh, and I guess there's not really much more to say. Uh, yeah, it's a very simple story. Probably not going to win any awards for the writing or anything like that. But if you like hard-hitting, balls-to-the-wall action movies, then I highly recommend you go out and see this one now. Tons of fun, definitely worth your money. And I guess that's about all I have to say about John Wick. So until next time, take care. Of your face.